Hey everybody, how's life treating you? I'm Russ Robo, and welcome back to Ultra Modded Skyrim Special Edition. Uh, today's video is actually kind of interesting. I had sort of an idea. I wanted to be able to actually show you guys what all the uh, perks are for the game. Uh, because there's been 133 new added perks, and I've only read a few of them, like maybe like seven or eight. And there's like hundreds of them, so I actually want to see what all they are. Uh, eventually, I'm, I may even be able to go to the um, Mage's College and find out what all the new spells are as well. I decided that um, since there are so many perks and it would take so long to read all of them, I think what I'll do is I'll divide this type of video into three different parts. Uh, three different parts. First, the um, the mage uh, sort of um, the the mage uh, perk lines, starting from alchemy, including illusion, conjuration, destruction, restoration, alteration, and enchanting. And then, of course, the knight. Um, uh, the next part, part two, would be the stuff from the Night Tree, which would include smithing, heavy armor, block, two-handed, one-handed, and then the last um, part would be the one from the Thief or Archer um, skill tree, which would include archery, light armor, sneak, lock picking, pickpocket, and speech. And of course, that'll bring us all the way back around. So once I've finished reading off all of those. And those three different parts will have a full description of what all the new uh, perks actually are. Uh, now, obviously, you don't have to watch this if you want it to be a surprise, but I don't know if I'll, you know, get every single perk. So it's kind of nice to read what all they do. Starting with alchemy, let's begin. <clears throat> obviously, ma uh, alchemy master potions you make are 20% stronger. I imagine at part two, that's like 40% stronger. Physician, you may choose. A type of beneficial potion, health, magic, or stamina. Potions you mix that restore or fortify the chosen attribute are 50% stronger. That's good. See, basically, I know it seems tedious now, but what we're mainly focused on is the new perks. And there's some crazy ones. There's some crazy ones. So you'll enjoy, you'll enjoy seeing some of them. Let's, let's go over there to Poisoner. Potions you mix are 1% more powerful per level of alchemy. Oh, poisons you mix. Poisons you mix are 1%. So, per level of alchemy, if you have a 100 alchemy, 100% stronger. That's basically double the poison. So, if you've got a poison that deals uh, 30 damage, it's dealing 60 now. That's good. Stimulants. When you use a beneficial potion or ingredient, you regenerate 2% of your magicka and stamina per, per second for 30 seconds. Sweet Christ. I think both of those are new. Okay, now which one? Okay, so over to Experimenter. Eating an ingredient reveals all effects. Oh, wow. Huh. I, I already ate a bunch of ingredients to reveal the first two effects. Um, what was the last thing? Um, man, I'll tell you what. Um, trying to get around your perk tree in VR, Skyrim VR, is ridiculous. Advanced Lab. You may choose to upgrade one alchemy lab to an advanced version for 2,500 gold. Potions you mix are 25% stronger at an advanced lab. Can be disassembled by sneaking, allowing you to upgrade another. Ah, so the, my personal lab, which I would probably choose my house, would make my potions much stronger if I made my potions there. Essential oil. You may choose a power. Fire oil. Fire oil, frost oil, or shock oil. At will. Create a potion of oil that lasts 20 seconds. It reacts violently when struck by a projectile or explosion, exploding and dealing damage equal to your alchemy level. Dude, that's so cool, you can make bombs on here now. <laughs> oh boy, I probably shouldn't have said that. Now the videos, I mean, you can't be monetized anyway, but it, now it never will be, because I said the B word. Okay. Um, the uh, explodey, uh, explodey booms, <laughs> still too bad, oh God. Oh man, anyway, let's move on. Uh, experimenter, advanced lab, let's move on to Lab Skeever. What is that? For 20 seconds after using an, any alchemy lab, beneficial potions you drink last 15 times longer and are 25% stronger. Wow. For... Hmm. For 20 seconds? Hmm. After using any alchemy lab, beneficial potions you drink last 15 times longer. 25% stronger. 
I guess you'd like if you're you'd want to drink the potion then. Maybe the potion would probably last a long time. Crimson Haze stimulants also increase movement speed by 10% for its duration. Oh. Bottomless Cup poisons applied to weapons last for one additional hit per 10 levels of alchemy. Oh, that's really good. So at level 100, you've got 10 hits with the same poison. That's insane. Or nine, or something like that. Whoa, don't skip ahead. Alkahest. Your potions are highly corrosive, enabling you to ignore 40% of the armor rating of an effective target for the duration. Wow. Um, goodness. Uh, my apologies if I'm mispronouncing anything. Let's go over to, and, and of course these are different trees. Like this one is the poisoner round. This one is mostly buffing yourself. Oh, whoa, 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 slow down there. Let's go to, uh, I pick the Alchemist Cookbook. You may choose a second elemental oil power. In addition to fire oil, frost oil, or shock oil, you may choose, you may, you may also choose calming oil, frenzy oil, paralysis oil, or hallowed oil. Huh. Is, that the, is those the ones that explode? Well, exploding and dealing damage to your alchemy level. Yeah, yeah, it explodes. And, 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 and deals an area of effect of the, you know, that type of potion or that type of spell. So, like, let's say you picked hollowed oil and you make a potion of that. And it's gonna, like, it's going to make all undead in, 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 in all undead affected by it run away. You hit it with something, it explodes, and all the undead in that area, they run away because it was a bomb. It went off. That was great. That, that's great. I want to see that. I want to see that happen, bruh. Green thumb, twice as many ingredients are gathered from plants. Seems like they changed the whole thing almost. Did they change the whole skill tree? That's awesome. Double, bubble, I want to go double toil and trouble. I want to see that. What is, what is that? My, my apologies, sometimes this thing isn't exactly a science to control. You mix twice as many potions at your advanced lab. Pure mixture. All negative effects are removed from created potions and all positive effects are removed from created poisons. Okay, I know that one was already. I gotta see Walking Disaster. What is Walking Disaster? Whoa, 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 whoa! Okay, we gotta go up, and then down, and over... Oh god, I gotta do the side thing. I can only do that with the analog stick. I, I feel. In combat, periodically spill a random oil puddle on the ground. Puddles last 60 seconds. Oh my god, that's so cool! In combat! During combat, periodically spill a random oil puddle on the ground. Oh, puddles last 60 seconds. Okay, that reminds me of something that I need to show you. It's not related to the skill tree. It's an item that I got. It's, I'm so sorry, this is completely diverging us from our video. But it only takes 10 seconds. Watch this. I found this ring at the General Merchant in um, Falkreath. I've been walking around doing some regular travel. Um, you know, trying to gain levels and sell junk. Uh, we'll be back with our regularly scheduled, you know, um, like, episodes soon enough. Look at this. I found this ring. It is called the Ring of the Forge. Grants an enchanted weapon at random intervals. I could be doing nothing, and it just gives me an enchanted weapon um, based on my level. It's usually iron daggers. Uh, I think I got like a mace or a club once with some frost damage, but it's a random enchanted item at, at just random intervals, and I can sell it for money. <laughs> it's it's the greatest ring on earth, the one ring to rule them all. It literally gives me free gold. I mean, not not you know uh, often, but it's it's so cool. It's so cool. Anyway, back to the skills. Okay, where were we? I'm so sorry, I, I, I know I got distracted, but that is so cool. Um, pure mixture, okay, uh, amplify lethality. Grants the amplify lethality power once a day. Point at a victim to point? Is the, is point a function? Is point a thing? When was point a thing? Point, once a day, point at a victim to silently reduce their poison resistance by 250% for 10 seconds. Wow, that's, that's, um, that's savage. Witchmaster, when you use a beneficial potion or ingredient, 50% chance to receive a powerful side effect, randomly chosen from a range of 40 side effects. Oh lord, what are they going to do? I don't know. Oh, did I miss this one? Yep, 
Maynad. Magic and stamina are increased by 50%, 50 points when you are under the effect of a beneficial potion or ingredient, but reduced by 25 uh, points when you are not. Whoa. Okay, let's go with... What does that say? Chemical wedding? Chemical wedding? Chemical wedding. Which master side effect have 50% chance to cause side effects themselves? So my side effects are going to have side effects. What the heck? See, this is why I had to read these. I've never read these before. This is crazy. World Serpent. When you shout, your blood turns poison. When you shout, your blood turns poisonous for 15 seconds. The next time you get hit with a weapon, retaliate with a powerful poisonous strike that deals 50 points of poison damage per second for 10 seconds. Sweet Christ, it turns you into a snake that spits acid. That which, do, that which does not kill you. Oh, this is going to be good. Upon learning this perk, you imbibe a deadly toxin, taking 150 damage per second. What? If you survive for 60 seconds, you receive three perk points and a permanent 25% bonus to all potions and poisons you make. Oh my god, it's a challenge. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a challenge. So you literally have to, you've got a quick save before you buy this perk, then the second you buy it, you've just got to chug potions or healing spells to keep yourself alive for 60 seconds. 150 damage a second. I would die right now. I've only got 150 health. <laughs> oh, I love these perks. They're great. <laughs> oh, oh, jolly good. Good God, we're already at 14 minutes. I've got to hurry this up. Oh, man, and that was just alchemy. That's not even a combat thing. Illusion. Illusion mastery, obviously. The same as usual. Illusion dual casting. Obvious, same as usual. Quiet before the storm. All spells you cast from any school of magic are silent to others. Okay, we know that. We know that one. Night eye grants the night eye power at will. Grants uh, grants improved night vision for 120 seconds. That's good. That's good. Ghost of the tenth eye. Oh, that's new. I think. Sneaking while under the effect of the vision of the tenth eye spell will summon a disembodied eye under your control. Under your control. The eye has one point of health, but is invisible and silent. You must know the vision of the Tenth Eye spell to learn this perk. Sneaky one with the vision of the Tenth Eye will summon a disembodied eye under your control. Can I move it around? Is it like the Gara thing? It's like Gara. It's like Gara with the sand thing. But is that what I do? How far can I control it? How far can I make that thing go out? Can I make it go into rooms and look around stuff? Is there even a... Is there? Do we even have scripting for that? <laughs> this is insane. Entice bear barter. Entice barter can activate at uh, can activate any target under the effect of a calm spell to initiate trade. Huh. Interesting. Imposing presence. You radiate an aura of mystical charisma that touches all within 40 feet. Any illusion spell you cast on those affected are, is 25% more powerful and lasts 30 seconds longer. Commanding presence. In combat, you radiate an aura of mystical nobility that touches allied creatures and people within 40 feet. Those affected grant, uh, gain 20% extra attack damage and have 20% chance of a critical strike. That's good. Uh, dream Thief. Okay, so we're going in the order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I should just read one tree at a time. So let's read the, um, the right tree first. Dream Thief. Activate sleeping victims to steal their dream. Good God. Increases the effectiveness of your illusion spells by 50% for 360 seconds. No, 3,600 seconds. Chance to fail and alert the victim based on illusion skill. Man, you could come up with a whole different kind of character with these perks. Like a whole storyline for your thing. Like, wow, you could be the Sandman. Just can take people's dreams. Um, mind affecting spells are and effects are 15% stronger for or 30 points if you are the same race as the target. Okay, Kindred Mage. Fickle Fate. Mind affecting spells and effects cast on others are between 1 to 40 points stronger chosen at random. Master of the Mind. Mind affecting spells, Calm, Fear, Frenzy, Rally, and Commanding Presence also work on Undead, Daedra, and Automatons. Dream Charm. Activate Sleeping Victims to protect, project yourself into their dream. Improving their disposition towards you. High disposition may earn you quests, discounts, and gifts. 
chance to fail and alert the victor based on illusion skill. Wow, that's cool. Like, quests? They Do they have scripting for that? Dream geese. Dream gaze. Dream gas. <laughs> Activate sleeping victims to send a dream that compels them to fight at your side until released. You can only have one dream thrall at a time. Chance to fla fail and alert the victor based on illusion skill. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it is. It, it's it's got to be dream geese, like code like code geese. Wow, that's cool. So maybe ge uh, like geese means a thing. Uh, middle middle section now. Imposing presence. Okay, we read that. Shadow refuge. While affected by an invisibility spell or effect, you take 25% less damage from attacks, and sneaking is 15% better. Invisibility spell or effect. If I'm invisible, I shouldn't be taking attack damage because if I'm taking attack damage, then the spell didn't work. <laughs> uh, anyway, wilting. Those affected by a calm spell or effect within the radius of imposing presence lose 200 points of armor and 50% magic presence. Magic resistance, right? Pardon. Neverworld. Neverworld. Those affected by a calm spell or effect within the radius of imposing presence are enraptured by a lotus dream from which they may refuse to return to reality. When the calm spell is broken due to an attack, they may become calmed again for 30 seconds. Sweet Christ. Well, you just, you can literally put them in a dream world and they might just choose to stay there until they're attacked? Wow. You could be, like, you could just, good God. You could literally play a character whose entire purpose in life is just to put the entire world of Skyrim to sleep. <laughs> Terror. Those affected by a fear spell or effect within the radius of imposing presence drop their weapon. Dang. You're just so, so ungodly powerful seeming that they just drop their weapons. Soul Crusher. Feast upon the minds of those affected by a fear spell or effect within the radius of imposing presence, absorbing 25 per points of magicka per second. Okay, so we're at Terror. Uh, let's go over to the Reaper. Oh wow, I, I didn't even get the whole protector thing. Okay, the Reaper comes. Ooh, activate any non-essential humanoid only under the effect of a calm spell to spend to send a wraith to slay the target within 15 seconds. This counts as an, as an assault if you get seen. This counts as an assault if you get seen. This effect has a 180 second cooldown and can only affect one target at a time. Any non-essential humanoid only. Okay, so basically, um, any any NPC, but they have to be humanoid and they have to be non-essential to the game. So like merchants, farmers, stuff like that. Imperious splendor. Let's see. Commanding presence and crown of the false king are twice as powerful as long as you remain above 75% health. Holy crap! You can literally make NPCs like think you're a holy thing. Like uh, what was? Oh, crown of the false king. I must have missed that one. Crown of the False King. Commanding Presence also increases armor by 80 points and magic resistance by 20 points. Then you go in Imperious Splendor, so you're making them think, Oh, I get it. Crown, so first you, you're you like a king. Imperious Splendor, you're like an emperor. Like you're splendid. You're, you're royalty. You're royalty. You're making them feel like you're royalty. And then this last one is Protect Your God. When struck by a weapon, May compel a nearby ally affected by commanding presence to engage your attacker, dealing 250 extra attack damage for 5 seconds. It makes NPCs feel like you're so, like, uh, like powerful that you just should not be attacked. Like, how dare you? How dare you try to attack this person? They're so amazing. Um, I think Pandemonium is next. Pandemonium. Those affected by a frenzy spell or effect within the radius of imposing presence gain 50% extra attack damage. Nightfall. Those affected by a frenzy spell or effect within the radius of imposing presence are consumed by battle hunger. When there are no other enemies remaining, taking 40 points of damage per second. Say what? Lamb to the slaughter. Activate any humanoid only under the effect of a fear spell to compel the target to stand motionless for 30 seconds. Your attacks against this target ignore armor. This effect has a 180 second cooldown and can only affect one target at a time. Wow. Heavy weighs the tapestry. Activate any humanoid only under the effect of a frenzy spell to incapacitate the target with magical exhaustion for 30 seconds and drain 500 points of magic and stamina. This effect has a 180 second cooldown and can only be activated on one target at a time. 
Wraith Walker. After using an active perk, Blind Guardian, Heavyweight, the Tapestry, Lamb to the Slaughter, Nemesis, the Reaper comes, the Illusion spells are 50% more powerful and, 50 and last 50% longer for 10 seconds. Okay, I don't remember reading... I don't remember reading Blind Guardian or Nemesis. Where... Oh, that... Oh, because I went to the, the middle route. So, um... Activate any hostile creature or humanoid in combat to summon an illusion of the target with 1% extra attack damage per illusion level. Oh, wow, that's so cool! You literally make a clone of them. You make their nemesis, and it's going to be stronger because of your illusion level. Blind Guardian. Activate any non-hostile creature or humanoid in combat to summon an illusion of the target. The illusion fights for the target fights for the target for 60 seconds and the target won't flee for its duration. Hmm. Summon an illusion of the target. Activate any non-hostile creature. Interesting. But this one's for hostile creatures. Very odd. I guess it's for your follower. You can make an illusion of your follower. Or just an illusion of a non-hostile creature. This one is definitely hostile, though. That is so cool. So that is illusion. God, we've got a long way to go. Conjuration, destruction, restoration, alteration, enchanting. Uh, I think I might have to make a fourth part where I do the, um... Where I do the, uh, crafting skills. Like, for example, enchanting, uh, smithing. Uh, uh, alchemy should have been part of that. Christ, we're already at 23 minutes. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. What's next? Conjuration. We know these two. Dual casting and mastery, same as usual. With, uh, Rat King. When entering combat, creates three undead skeevers under your control. Their corpses can be raised, but they dissipate when combat ends. Use the Merciful King power to temporarily prevent this ability from activating. So, pre to prevent them from dissipating. I don't know about that one, though. It's interesting, but skeevers are not very powerful. I don't know, three of them could be a pretty decent distraction, allowing me to get away. This is one that I've been most interested in, Bone Collector. Find 11 types of bones on humanoid corpses. Four bone altars are marked on the map. At a bone altar, convert one of each bone into a skeleton warrior. Skeletons do not count against your summon limit. Enemies can only temporarily defeat them, not destroy them. You can literally raise an army that just gets back up. <laughs> I can't wait to I can't wait to have that. Okay, so that's Bone Collector, Dead Tide. Maximum number of skeletons increased by one for each 75 points of base magicka. Cool. Okay, uh, Barrow Lord, Barrow Lord. May give commands to all skeletons within 150 feet at once, instead of one at a time. Skeletons take 25% less damage from attacks. Skeleton mages? They can be mages? Able to create skeleton mages, fire, frost, shock, at bone altar. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. Uh, conjure altar. No way. Yes, I knew it. I knew it. That's what it does. Grants the conjure altar power at will. Summons a bone altar for 60 seconds. You can literally conjure up an altar anywhere. You don't have to go to one. That's so cool. Okay, uh, let's see. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, uh, what's next? Puppet Master. Your created skeletons take 25% less damage when you are blocking, dealing 25% more damage when you are attacking, and their spells are 25% more powerful when you are casting a spell. That's so cool. Sorry, I'm like jumping all around and trying to get back to the beginning. Ravenous Dead. Reanimated minions receive a brief burst of strength, dealing 200% extra attack damage for 15 seconds after being reanimated. The the what cap? The what? The level cap of reanimated spells and effects is increased by 1% per level of conjuration. <clears throat> My god, there's too much to read. Uh, okay, Dead Tide, I went to Borrow Lord, so now I need to go over to the left for Reap and Sow. You loot 60% more bones from corpses and recover 50% more bones when you destroy a created skeleton. Created skeletons last 75% longer. Oh, I see. So they do eventually, like, come undone. They just can't be defeated in battle. Okay, skeleton mage. Uh, let's go with... 
Ravenous Dead. Preservation. Let's go with preservation. Summoned and reanimated undead last three times as long, or 20 times if you place... Good God, 20 times? Or 20 times if you place Hag Raven Feathers into their inventory, or use the Dread Zombie or Dread Thrall spells. Reanimated undead also gained 500 armor for 60 seconds after being reanimated. My God, that's so cool. Undead Crown. Restores 10 points of health and magicka per second to summon or reanimate an undead within 15 feet. A plague upon thee. If a reanimated undead is destroyed within 20 seconds, the attacker is stricken with a Daedric disease that deals 40, 40 damage per second for 20 seconds. Those who have this perk are immune. My god, I'm going to put this game on legendary and have an army of commanding skeletons. <laughs> oh boy. Corpse gas. <laughs> that sounds so, so bad. If your reanimated undead is destroyed while on fire, Whilst on fire within 60 seconds, it explodes, dealing up to 300 points of fire damage to targets to targets without this perk. You deal five times as much fire damage to your reanimated undead. Sweet Christ. That's why they let you know that if you see one that's about to go down, you just hit it with a fireball and blow everything up. Oh my god, Necromaster. Grants finer control over creatures reanimated with powerful reanimation spells. Dread Zombie, Dread Thrall, able to manipulate their inventory and equip items. That's never been a thing. If they are humanoid and they emit a glow when slain that can be seen through walls, the level cap of those spells is also increased by 100%. That's good. They emit that glow so if they get, you know, taken out and you can't find them anymore, you won't lose all the stuff that you put on them to make them more powerful. Shocked to life. If your reanimated minion is struck by a shock spell within 30 seconds after reanimation completes, it's a uh, if your reanimated minion is struck by a shock spell within 30 seconds after reanimation completes, it's it attacks 250% strong faster and moves 50% faster for 10 seconds. You deal no damage to your reanimated minions with shock spell. Holy crud! Okay, so that's shock to life. Uh. Oh man, let's start from the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning. I I'm definitely gonna miss stuff. Oh god, I I didn't even go all the way over the rend for the uh feed the mon. There's too many. <sighs> feed the monster, able to feed human flesh to summon or reanimated creatures, healing them and increased. Good god, human flesh. That, that, that's awful. Uh, healing them and increasing health, magic and stamina by 200 points for 60 seconds. This effect stacks. Sweet Christ, you could literally be like a really bad person on this game. That's so cool. Soul Raider. Bound weapons cast Soul Trap on targets for 5 seconds after trapping 250 souls. All bound weapon perks last twice as long. Cool. Rend from this world. Bound weapons banish creature... Ca bound weapons ca uh, banish conjured Daedra. Turn reanimated undead and deal 100 extra damage to non-conjured Daedra. I think that was already a thing, but that's good. Void burn. Bound weapons brand victims with unholy energy for 5 seconds, halting magic and stamina regeneration while draining 15 points per second. When both are depleted, the, en the energy starts devouring their flesh, dealing 15 points of magic damage per second. Sweet Christ. Hollow binding. Bound weapons cut through flesh and spirit, reducing magic resistance by 30% for 5 seconds. Covenant of Cold Harbor. Hollow Binding reduces magic resistance by an additional 30% if you control a summoned Daedra or other non-undead minion. Wow. So you need to be care you need to be conscious of what tree you're going to go with. If you just go all over the if you just go all over all of the trees, then none of your perks will match up. They won't have synergy. So I'm going I'm going undead mage. I'm going bone mage. I'm going bone uh, bone necromancer. All bones. Bones for the bones. Skull for the skull throne. Um, preservation. Edge of oblivion. Okay, we need to start from the beginning. There's just too dang much. Uh, too, too dang much. Uh, okay, plain meld. Oh god, there's so many. Uh, okay, I got all those. I got all those. I got all those. We go plain meld, then signed in blood, then automancy. Plain mold. Meld. Able to summon Daedra and none other and then diminish five target of Vietnam in there. Able to summon Daedra and other non-undead minions five times farther away. That's That's been there. Signed in blood. When a friendly conjured Daedra within 15 feet 
is below full health. It absorbs your life force to heal itself. Oh, that's not good. Pre preventing you from regenerating health, but regenerating 10 points per second. Uh, increased by 4% for its maximum health when out of combat. Interesting. I guess that could work. Ottomancy. Summon Daedra and other non-undead minions last three times as long or five times at night. Ooh. Okay, Pact Magic or Edge of Oblivion? Edge of Oblivion. You can summon or reanimate one additional minion, and they last 50% longer. When you do not command a summoned or reanimated minion, you lose 250 points of armor and 50% uh, magic resistance. Sweet Christ, that's bad. Or, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's good as long as you keep your minion up and running. Packed magic. Destruction spells and effects are 10% more effective for each friendly conjured danger within 30 feet. That's good. What time is it? Maelstrom. While you charge or concentrate on a spell, friendly conjure Daedra within 30 feet gain 30% extra attack damage. That's good, that's good. Elemental po Potency. Autronox, Autro Autronox Conjurations now call potent Autronox that are... Autronox Conjurations now call potent Autronox that are higher level and more powerful. Ah, oh. I think that was, I think that was already a thing. Yeah, yeah, potent Autronox. Uh, I used to have a few. Uh, summon resist. Friendly conjured Daedra and other non-undead minions are within 75 feet, gain 50% magic resistance, and three, uh, 300 points of armor. That's very good. I already read March of Oblivion, so unleash hell. Conjured Daedra within 75 feet, gain additional spells on a 30 second cooldown. Flame Autronox gains fire explosion. Frost Autronox gains Reduced armor slash magic resistance curse. Storm Autronaut gains ma magnetic lockdown. Demora gains increased attack damage and movement speed. That's so cool. That's so cool. Okay, did we get all the Puppet Masters? Brandon the Necromancer? I think we did. Oh, no, I don't think so. Um, okay, we stopped at Conjured Off. Brandon the Necromancer. Brand a corpse by striking it with a bound weapon or by delivering the killing blow with a, with a bound weapon attack. The brand grants 25% attack damage and 100 points of health when reanimated or resurrected. Undead and automatons cannot be branded. Wow, that's cool. So you have like a, 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 like a minion that's sort of like standing there and you want it to be more powerful in its next attack so you brand it, it gets like, you know, knocked out, dead and then reanimates itself or you bring it back with the brand. That's cool. Puppet Master. Your created skeletons take 25% less damage when you are blocking, deal 25% more attack damage while you are attacking, and their spells are 25% more powerful when you are casting a spell. I think I read that already, but still really cool. King of Bones. Did we get that one? Uh, nope. Assume control of a skeleton while becoming invulnerable. The skeleton does quadruple damage and takes half damage. You, oh, you assume control? Do I become the skeleton? The skeleton does... Oh, becoming invulnerable. The skeleton does quadruple damage and takes half damage. Unless commanded to, re to remain passive, it automatically attacks foes in range. Lasts up to 75 seconds. Uh, it may, oh, it automatically attacks. So maybe you can only change its direction or, or look around. Oh, we've got to see that. That's interesting. Uh, again, do we have scripting for that? Does this game have scripting for that? Does the mod add the scripting for these things? Very interesting. Okay, so what all did we finish today? We got Conjuration, Illusion, and Alchemy. I think we're going to put those three in one video since we're already up to nearly 40 minutes. And then to, uh, tomorrow I will do... Oh, well, that's a Steam update. Tomorrow I will do Destruction, Restoration, and Alteration. Uh, apparently that's as far as I'm going to be able to get. And then after that... Um, we need to fit enchanting in there somehow. Can't have uneven uneven numbers, just do one. So I guess tomorrow will be destruction, restoration, alteration, and enchanting. We'll have to go pretty fast. But anyway, I hope you uh, I hope this video answered some questions you might have about some of the perks available in the game. There's a lot more to go and they sound pretty in like the ones we've read so far sound very interesting. So I'm hoping that there'll be some even uh, equally as good perks on the other skill trees. I hope this video, I hope you enjoyed. 
If you did, make sure to uh, subscribe for updates on future videos. Leave a like if you liked it. Uh, comments in the comment section to let me know what you're thinking. Um, and until next time, take it easy, my friends.